What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest. Today, we're going to go through the latest Lions news and rumors. So let's get it started. Up, we're going to bite a kneecap off, and we're going to stand up, and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap, and we're going to get up, and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you. Before, before long, we're the going to be the last one standing. Yeah! He's the goal! Oh, he's the goal! Nobody. Welcome to everybody doing a video. Glad you guys are here. Hopefully everybody's having a great Friday so far. It's Friday. Yes, sir. We're almost to the weekend. And today we have some things to talk about with our Detroit Lions. You know, news hasn't been crazy recently since the draft has happened. But there's been a few things here and there. So we're going to kind of catch up on a few things today. Go through it. And, of course, when we get, like, the big breaking news, we'll go through that. And I think there is... Not necessarily breaking news, but there's definitely something that's worth making its own video about, but we might as well just put it into this video. Now, before we get it started, I do have a question of the day. I like this question. This is a really good one, okay? So really think about this one. Would you rather look or feel like a potato? Okay, so that's tough, okay? Let's really break this down for a second. I was thinking, if I had to look like a potato, okay? I could see looking like Mr. Potato Head for a couple of days. Like, that'd be kind of cool, you know? I'm not sure, like, what my eyes would look like. Do I keep the same eyes? Or do I get the big eyes, like, the big nose and stuff like that? I kind of, like, take my arms off. Like, I don't know that part, but if I just look like a normal potato walking around, like, just, you know, kind of, like, scooting across the ground, that'd be kind of cool. You know, it could be like, damn, that big potato. As long as no one tries to take a bite of you or something. So I could, I could see that. Feeling like a potato, I don't know exactly what that means. Does that mean like, cause the outside is like rough? Maybe I'm missing the point of this question. I'm gonna say feel like a potato. I don't know exactly what's meant by feel like a potato. They mean like actually feel like a potato or they mean like you feel like a potato. Like, I don't know what a potato feels like. Uh Oh, I, are potatoes the ones that cry? I don't know what a potato feels like. Like a sack of potatoes, like you're tired, like you're lazy. Is that, is that what they mean? I don't, I don't wanna be that all the time. That'd be, that'd be tough. I mean, I don't know if I could look like a potato every day, but feel like one. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't know. You know, potatoes are hard. They're rough, you know, the outside. So I, I would say feel like a potato. All right. So uh, that's the question of the day. Comment down below which one. We're going to go into some of the latest Detroit Lions news. Let's just get right into it. Okay, let's start off with some rookie talk here. Okay, let's, let's start off with the rookies. Some news here. We kind of broke this down last year when each one was individually signed, but we have two signings to discuss, so we're going to put them into this video. You know, there's no reason to do this own video if we don't have to. So, a little bit of news here. The Lions have signed third round pick Aleem McNeil out of NC State. We just did the video on Aleem McNeil, so this is great timing. If it was a little bit earlier, it been perfect because I could have been like, they signed him and now let's do the video. He has been signed to a four-year contract like all rookie deals. So that's really good. Congratulations to Lee McNeil. No surprises there, but congratulations. He has also seemingly picked the number 54 to wear next season, okay? He went on his Instagram and he posted like, you know, 21st birthday. First off, happy birthday, Lee McNeil. That's what's up. He posted like a happy birthday thing and he was wearing a photo edit of number 54. Doesn't mean he'll be that number, but it seems like there's a good chance that that might be the number that he's targeting. So number 54 could be Ali McNeil. Now, hey, if you guys know a number 54, you probably know Chris Buhlman. All right, Chris Buhlman wore the number 54 as well. You know, that's pretty cool. Chris Buhlman working with us. So maybe there's something there. You may really like that Ali McNeil pick. He's like, here, take my number. Uh, Steven Longa wore number 54 back in 2019. I remember DeAndre Levy wearing number 54. Okay, there's been some legit number 54s. I like it. So Lee McNeil may be taking that number 54. And I think that's kind of a cool number for a defense. Like, I could rock with that for a DT. I don't know. It's just like his build, like that fits. It fits that. Because he wore 29 in college. I think 54 would be pretty, pretty good. Second player who has signed his rookie deal, this is Jermar Jefferson. Now, I think most of the time when you look at these rookie signings, it usually goes, you know, from further back in the draft and it kind of works its way forward to like the first round. Those are a little bit later. Sign of a big deal. Sometimes that doesn't happen with seventh round picks, especially when they're, you know, really three picks till the end, but he did get his contract. So congratulations, Jermar Jefferson. You know, it's not a very expensive deal, but he has been locked up by the Detroit Lions running back out of Oregon State. So two rookies down, two rookies have signed their contracts. Five more to go. We'll keep an eye on those and uh, see who gets signed next. But now it's probably the main story of the video. Let's talk a little bit about this. This is Terrell Crosby. Now, there's a lot that goes into this whole situation here with Terrell Crosby. Apparently, according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, basically shown indications to consider or look to move offensive tackle Terrell Crosby. 
All right, big time. Okay, Terrell Crosby, who looks like the Detroit Lions backup tackle right now with Penny Sewell joining the mix. He was our backup tackle in the past as well. But really came into our year as Terrell Crosby's the starter. We had the Rick Wagners. And last season, I think the idea was that when we brought in Big V, he would be the right tackle, even though it was kind of new to him. He would be the right tackle. He kind of just became the guard. So Crosby did take a lot of that role last season. So he was sort of like a starter. But at the same time, he didn't come into the season with the expectations, I would say, to be a starter. But he did play a lot last season for the Detroit. Lions and now there's word that the Lions could be looking to trade him after the draft after drafting offensive tackle Penny Sewell out of Oregon so interesting things here now when I first heard this news I thought to myself man I do not like this at all I don't like it you know you, you got to keep Terrell Crosby you got to keep the depth you know there's a lot of reasons we'll go into him I did not like the idea of trading Terrell Crosby but the more and more I thought about it I think there is a very big X factor to this, this to this decision for the Detroit Lions if they decide to go this route. All right, so I broke this down into two categories. Let's talk about why they should trade him and why they shouldn't trade him. Now, let's go into my first one first, and this is why they shouldn't trade him, because this is what I was thinking first. The experience that he gives you at the tackle position, especially at the right tackle position. He's played both tackle spots. We know he could probably bump inside the guard. The experience that he has given you, especially last season, is very valuable. Okay, he's on the last year of his deal, so it's not very super expensive contract and we'll put that in a different you know mindset a little bit later but regardless he's on the team he's got experience he's played a lot of different he's played a couple of different positions for the Detroit Lions I believe is a very versatile piece really nice to have a guy like that especially now in a 17 game season even if even if he doesn't start just to have that death because we know injuries happen, you know, guys are going to have to move around. So a piece like Crosby that can move around, play different spots, his experience doing it, it's not like, I don't know what I'm going to get. You know what you're going to get from Terrell Crosby. That is nice. Then the Penny Sewell pick. Now, Penny Sewell, very exciting. We're not sure if he's playing right tackle or left tackle. Most people believe right tackle. Let's just say hypothetically he plays right tackle, and that means Terrell Crosby, you know, is the backup, you know, the swing tackle. Swing tackle basically meaning you play left tackle and right tackle. That's what swing tackle means. Terrell Crosby would be your backup. But the thing is, with a guy like Penny Sewell, if he's moving to that right tackle position, like most people believe that he is, as much as I, you know, though Penny Sewell, the, the ceiling is extremely high. I'm super happy we got Penny, Penny Sewell. He was a top 10 pick. It doesn't mean the transition is going to be seamless for a guy like Penny Sewell. He did not play last season in 2020. He played in a very heavy screen offense. When I watched this film and I said it when we drafted him, I said it before we drafted him, I did not believe he was the most polished product at the tackle position in this class. But I do believe he has the highest ceiling of any other tackle in this class because of his age, what he can do at his age, and his mobility is just insane at his size I love it I do he's a he's a phenomenal tackle and you know he's gonna probably have the highest ceiling of any of these guys good coaching is gonna take him to to extremely high places but when you're talking about first year especially if Penny Sewell is going to right tackle which is a position that is new to him he's never played that spot you know, again, assuming he plays right tackle. Now, they could push him to left tackle, move Decker to right tackle. They could try that. I don't think they will, but they could. They could put Penny Sewell at guard. That doesn't seem like the plan here because when you heard Brad Holmes after the Penny Sewell pick, he was basically like, yeah, we won't need to get a tackle in next year's draft. It's one of the top picks. So it seems like he'll play one of the tackle positions. But tackles can struggle year one. It just happens. Offensive tackles, offensive linemen, it's tough to translate tackles year one to the NFL, especially if you're moving positions. You're maybe not the polished. You're very young. You didn't play last season again that's not saying he's gonna be bad I'm not saying he's gonna be bad I just know statistically speaking you look at the evidence tackles can struggle early in their career and it makes sense you know it's really tough I mean the game changes a lot and you look at a guy like Penny Sewell, didn't really have the most one-on-one -on -one matchups against some of the premier pass rushers where he just shut him down because he didn't have those games. He just didn't have those matchups at Oregon. So, you know, there are a little bit of concerns of his transitioning that could take a little bit of time. And I'm not saying that he won't come in and be the starter because I do believe he'll be coming to be the starter. Just look at the history of the tackle position. And that's even why I love the tackle pick even more this year because he's going to get this year to develop. You know, he's going to have this year to develop with the Detroit Lions and he's going to have his bumps. You know, he's going to have his hiccups. The fact that we got him, because I know it takes a little bit of time for these guys. But I mean, look at an example like Andrew Thomas. Now, I do think what he's got going for him is the fact that the offensive line around him is pretty secure. You kind of know what you're getting there. You got a pretty darn good offensive line supporting cast. So it's not like, you know, he's trying to hold up a weak offensive line. He's going to be part of a good offensive line with really smart players like Frank Ragnall to their Decker to learn from. I think there's a lot of good factors going for him, but I just know that it can happen, especially with a very young player that you can struggle in your first year. So it's nice to have a guy like Terrell Crosby there. Not even if he's not even starting just to help mentor him. Here's, you know, things that I know from picked up and playing from the position. And then of course the fact that if injuries strike, if you're gonna move things around, Terrell Crosby can slide in and take that role. And as I mentioned, he's not very expensive for this year and he is on the last year of his contract. So when I first heard this, I was completely against the idea of doing this 
because to me, it just it, it doesn't make sense to lose this kind of depth. Now, you look at our other backup tackles. You have Mal Matt Nelson. You have Dan Skipper. Matt Nelson is legitimately a backup tackle to me. He played over 240 snaps last season, and he didn't look bad. He did look a little rough around the edges when you watch his film. Like, it wasn't the most clean tape, but he is still pretty new to it. I mean, he went from defensive lineman to offensive lineman as soon as the Lions drafted him out of Iowa, the six foot eight guy. So, you know, it makes sense. I can see him being a legitimate backup tackle lines are confident in. But a guy like Dan Skipper, all right, Skipper, who was placed on IR last season, Skipper, who in week 17 played, what was it, nine snaps on defensive line? I'm not really sure about Dan Skipper right now. You know, maybe they push him back to tackle. I'm not really sure what's going on with Dan Skipper. So my first thought was completely against the whole idea of training Terrell Crosby. But then I thought about it a little bit more, and I think there's some X factors that need to be taken to account. So reasons to trade. Well, let's start off with the the contract reasons first. Like I said, he's got one year left on his deal. So after this season, if you don't repay him, you're not going to get anything for him. He's probably going to walk. Maybe you get a cop pick if someone signs him to a big enough deal. Maybe something like that comes out of it. But there's a good chance you're probably not getting anything in return for Terrell Crosby if you let him walk after the season. So this would be an opportunity to get something while he's still under contract. Also, he was not drafted by Brad Holmes. He was not drafted by this regime. He was here already. So I don't know how they feel about him. If they don't you know, love him, I don't know, then yeah, they could look to move on and you know get that draft capital back that they lost in that Derek Barnes trade up. They lost a fourth round pick. If they could get something like that in return, you know, then you got that pick. They're watching Terrell Crosby's film. I think he could interest some teams because of his age, because of, you know, the fact that the first year is going to be a cheaper deal and then he's off his rookie deal. So you can make that decision if you want to bring him back. I think it's going to interest teams. For the Lions, I don't think, just based off of last season, I think he's improved every year, which is big time, especially for his age. I don't think that you want him to be your starter, but I think he could be your starter. When I watched him play, it was solid, but it wasn't anything that was like, whoa, I want this to be our starter next season. This is our answer at right tackle. Didn't look like the answer for us, at least yet, but he's still very young. He's improving every year. At some point, he may become the answer for somebody at tackle that, you know, could use him. But for the Lions, I didn't feel like after last year's film, he was the answer at right tackle, which is why I'm very happy we got a guy like Penny Sewell. You can see why other teams uh, could be very interested and intrigued by Terrell Crosby for his age, for his price tag. And I think the value could actually be pretty high considering the fact that ta tackles are valuable in the NFL, especially a young guy like Crosby who's still on his rookie deal that's got one year left on his deal so his first year is going to be cheap. Those guys are valuable. Some team will find value there and they could be willing to give up a pretty you know, nice return, I think, for a guy like Terrell Crosby. Contract in terms of draft capital. The next reason, and this is what I started to think about, the X factor to me, to me in this situation is Big B, all right? Vitae is the X factor because every time I look at the Lions offensive line, I always think to myself, all right, Big B's the right guard. They told us they had, they like the idea of putting him there. I just assume Big V's the right guard. Okay, I'm looking at the offensive line. I'm like, oh, I like it. But then I look at the backup tackles and I'm not completely sold. However, I keep forgetting about Big V. Now, Big V's not the only X factor. I think the other one is then Logan Stenberg. I think those two guys combine because number one, the Lions have half enough confidence to, to have a guy like Logan Stenberg step into that right guard role if need be assuming the offense line looks like it did last season that he could step into that right guard role I don't think Drake Jackson would do that I just don't think he can play guard but I think you know a guy like Stenberg so if they're confident that Stenberg could do that because we have not seen Stenberg one time which stinks the Detroit Lions did bring in Tommy Kramer as a UDFA out of Notre Dame so there's a chance that maybe he plays that backup guard role I don't know I'm just hoping we hear some good news with Logan soon because we haven't heard about him like at all and he was their fourth round pick last year so that will also be a very big factor in the trust in the guards you have. Odea Bushi, he's gone. He's with the LA Chargers. Kenny Wiggins, he's gone. He's with the New York Giants. Both those guys have played some reps with us in the backup roles before. So you lost experience there. If you're confident in Stenberg based on maybe his college film or just talking to him, then Big V becomes the X factor because Big V can play the tackle spot. Now, interesting thing with him is that his contract also has an out after the season. You don't have to exercise it, but it does have an out if you want him to go elsewhere. So you could Good. But the thing is with Big V, assuming he starts at right guard, if you needed something where, hey, Sewell, Decker holding down to tackle positions, maybe you need tackle help, he could slide and kick to both tackle positions. When he moved to tackle, from my film, I felt like he was way more comfortable in pass protection. He was just not as able to use his biggest strength, and that's mauling. Okay, He's a mauler, and that's why guard fits him. But at the same time, at tackle, he did look more comfortable in pass protection. I think the reason is because that's his background. He did a lot of left tackle. Now, right tackle was kind of new to him as well. So if you needed him at left tackle, you could honestly throw him to that position. But, you know, a guy is Sewell's healthy and Decker's not. You could just put Sewell there. So he gives you that ability. He might be arguably our most versatile offensive lineman right now because he can play all the spots. Not our best. 
he needs to prove himself because otherwise I think that out is going to be exercised. But that is a way to challenge him. Hey, if we need you to attack, we're going to put you there because if you can do this, we can consider keeping this, you know, contract we have and you do it at a high level. But if not, then there's, you know, we know the outs after this year. So the pressure is on to you. So I get that part of it. So there is the X factor. And then of course, you know, you have a guy like Stenberg that could pop into that role to right guard, you know, when, you know, Big V moves. So I, I think he's the X factor in this situation because he can play all those different spots. I still do like the idea of keeping Terrell Crosby for depth because again like I said Sewell I know that rookies can struggle especially at the offensive line position earlier in their career I think he's in a great environment however but I know it can happen I think they're going to use him in really good ways using to strength screen zone run under every run I think they're going to get really good things out of him and he's going to transition better than most than a lot of rookie tackles have but I do know it's tough so I do like the idea of keeping Crosby but here's kind of what I came down to my idea is this if you can get a fourth maybe a fifth or higher I could definitely see making that trade because then you can kind of regain what you got from the Barnes trade. It's a solid return for a guy in the last year of his deal. If you weren't going to bring him back anyway, then there you go. You got some out of it. If it's less than that, I would definitely err on the side of keeping him on the roster because I know the value in depth. I know we need depth. I saw last year in the defense line what happened. Not to say we don't have depth on the offensive line, but there's still a lot of question marks with a lot of guys. Big V even has question marks. Logan Stenberg has huge question marks. Uh, the tack backup tackles have question marks. Drake Jackson, haven't seen him in the NFL. I think that's what the Lions are doing. They're considering, you know, how good of value can we get for him because he could become very valuable to certain teams that need tackle help, especially once we get closer to the season. Teams like, oh gosh, we need tackle help. He could be a very valuable piece and uh, teams obviously know that he's available and that could run up, you know, a couple teams being interested. So, yeah, that's kind of my idea on Terrell Crosby. If we get a nice return, I'm fine with it. If we keep him, I'm cool with that as well because I think the depth is very necessary even if he's not starting. The next thing I want to touch on is the Detroit Lions' Derek Barton picks. We just brought him up. And apparently, the NFL praised the Detroit Lions. Well, NFL, you know, teams praise the Detroit Lions. I don't know if they were trying to finesse us or they actually were praising us. No, I think they're actually praising us because Brad Holmes said that he got multiple texts of teams either frustrated or teams congratulating him on making that pick of Derek Barnes. So we traded up from 153 to 113. And that's the pick that we're talking about. The Lions could regain for 2022 with that fourth round pick because I know that Brad Holmes are all about, you know, the draft capital. So I get it. He needs his draft capital. So that's why it makes sense to trade Crosby. He wants his draft capital. He needs draft capital to build this team like he wants to build this team. So I get it and I understand in that part of it and uh, he's not his guy so if they trade him away I would not be surprised and I would understand it uh, but I also do like the idea of keeping Terrell Crosby as well okay it just depends on what they get in return but the NFL kind of congratulated uh, Brad Holmes on making that pick. And so did Rick Spielman, Chris Spielman's brother who works with Minnesota. He said that, you know, basically he had to say that, okay, it was a nice pick by the Lions. So that definitely a lot of people like the pick that the Lions made with Derek Barnes, the linebacker out of Purdue. A lot of people praise the Detroit Lions for that pick. So that's pretty cool. And uh, apparently Chris Spielman wrote off on this pick, passed the test of Chris Spielman. You know, whether or not Chris Spielman thought it was, you know, a good linebacker pick because he knows the linebacker position extremely well. And he said, you know, things that stuck out to Chris Spielman when they took a deeper look at Derek Barnes, which apparently uh, Sears uh, was very big pushing Derek Barnes, so good for him. Uh, but apparently, you know, Chris Spielman would like his vision, his ability to close, and his hand usage. Vision, I don't know if I completely agree with that, but the other two I definitely agree with. He, that he has the intangibles to his game, which he definitely does. The strength, the speed the speed the top end speed is there the length all right so he absolutely has the intangibles to his game so yes Chris Spielman he wrote off on that pick the Lions made the trade and a lot of teams really praised the Lions some teams frustrated they didn't get him they didn't get to take him because the linebacker group was falling fast that's that's what I was talking about like it was going quick you had to make the move you're gonna do it but at the same time their teams were congratulating the Detroit Lions for making that pick all right so that is your latest Lions news Comment down below, do you think the Lions should trade away Terrell Crosby? And what would you want in return to make that kind of trade happen? I could see, I could understand it happening. Wouldn't it shock me because I understand how important draft picks are to Brad Holmes. But at the same time, if it's not a great return, I would definitely just like to keep him. Let me know the thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching. And I'm out.